and welcome to New Testament Church of God, Luton. Um, good afternoon all and welcome to New Testament Church of God, Luton. First of all, I would like to greet Pastor and Sister Donna, the CPC and the brethren and those who are online. Um, we're just going to start a service with a time of prayer. So I'm going to ask Amara and Taj if they can come and just lead us in a time of prayer. So if we can just stand, please, as we pray. Thank you, Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. God bless you all. Um, thank God for his goodness, for his mercy towards us. God is good. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. He deserves the praise. Today is the day that marked when Christ rose again from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. He is risen. He's not in the grave. And so um, Amara is just going to declare Psalm 100 before we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. Hallelujah. And it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So we shall enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Instruction here is be thankful to him and bless his name. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy towards us. Father, we thank you for sending Jesus Christ to bless each and every one of us and to turn us from our sins. Father, we thank you that even today, Lord God, as your son has risen from the dead, Father, we come today in thanksgiving and in praise, acknowledging you who died for sins and rose again from the dead so that we might taste and see that you are good. Father, I thank you for sealing us with your spirit, O God. Lord, I pray today, Lord God, that you will inhabit the praises of your people. Mighty God, I pray that our worship will be pleasing unto you, Lord, that our praise will be pleasing unto you. Father, and as I heard a song earlier that will be sung today, it says, let's forget our, about yes. ourselves, magnify his name, you, and worship him. Yes. So, Father, we deny ourselves today. Yes. Father, we glorify you today. Thank and, Lord, you, I pray that you will keep us from evil today, yes. even as we yes. gather to worship you and to bless your name. Thank, Thank you for you, deliverance. Thank you for salvation. Thank you, Thank you for healing Thank you. today. Hallelujah. Thank you for breakthrough, yes. oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your angels whom you've sent, oh God, to assist Thank us, oh God, today in whatever way we need Thank assistance. You. Lord, we magnify your name. Thank you. May you be praised now and forevermore. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God because I was going to read Psalms 100 as well. When, when I was speaking to God about what we're going to do today and what it is he wanted me to do with and, and be with everyone and it was worship him um, to forget about everything else and worship him we come into his house to worship him at home we worship him in bad situations we worship him Jesus died we worship so let us worship the Lord today Lay everything aside. Lay yourself aside. We have come to do that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
Praise the Lord. Guys, I can't praise him for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You were the word of the 
Let's just say that. is our challenge. She does not stand alone. Sister Donna, I'm going to ask you to pray with Sister McIntosh. If there's anyone else here, you need prayer. Come. Come and let's pray together. If you're able to, I'm going to ask you to stand as we pray together. Because you're going to have plenty of time to sit. It's going to be, you're going to have a long time to sit. So let's stand now while we can. You're here and you need prayer. Sister Sherelle, come and pray, please. You're here and you need prayer. We're going to call on the name of Jesus. The musicians are playing nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away?
right, so we believe in giving God praise and thanks in advance. Second Chronicles chapter 20 tells us of Jehoshaphat, who gave praise in advance. And so prayers have been offered today and we want to give God thanks in advance. So let us give God praise and let us glorify Him and honour Him in advance. Believe in Him, trust in Him, knowing that He is faithful, knowing that He's just and that His promises are true. Amen. Don't sit yet. Please stand. Please stand. We're, we're too quick to sit. Please stand. Thank you, Jesus. Please stand with me. Thank you, Jesus. We are preparing, we are preparing ourselves for our to return our tithes and to give our offerings. First, I just want to thank all of those who've given up their seats. Uh, we really appreciate you. We're grateful that we have this problem. Uh, it's a problem that we want to continue. And even when we have our own building, we want the problem. So, yes. Anybody agreeing with me? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we say, Father, thank you. Thank you for your goodness towards us. Thank you that you are faithful. Your promises never fail. You are true to your word. Today, Father, we thank you for your word, which said, press down, shaken together, and are running over. May it be returned to your people. Father, you said that our vine will not cast its fruit before the time, and that you will return all that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust has stolen. Father, thank you that our store and our basket will never go empty. And Lord, you have blessed us to be a blessing. Father, may we bless others with our lives and with our substance. Father, may your glory be seen through our lives and may we reflect you living in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Praise God. If you are new here, our ushers will tell you when your row should come and give. If you wish to give electronically, on my left is Marnie. Just wave your hand, Marnie. This is Marnie. She has a card reader, so she can take, uh, return, you can return your tithes and give your offerings electronically using a card or a device. Uh, alternatively, you can bring your offering down the center and place it in the receptacle. Right now, our worship team will come back to us and lead us in a time of worship. Hallelujah. The song that we're going to sing is, God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. And we want to give him to give us vision. Amen. 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 And wisdom. Hallelujah. See things like 
Thank you, Jesus. So today I'll be doing the announcements. And uh, that's, that was a good time for you to say, oh. I'll be doing the announcements. And there'll be some movement around me, but don't concern yourselves overly. Uh, so whilst we're just waiting for the announcements to come, I will, oh, here they're here. So we'll just start. So our Women's Discipleship Ministry Department are inviting everyone to join them for our Women's Day service on Sunday the 7th. That's next week, Sunday. And they are asking women in particular to wear royal blue and black or royal blue. So royal blue and black or royal blue. The engine room, which is our national online prayer time, the next engine room is on the 10th of April, and the codes are there, but we'll also send them out nearer to the date. And our guest services department is in need of two volunteers to join the ushers team. If you're interested, please reach out to Sister Bev Campbell, who I think may have just gone upstairs, but please reach out to her. Our 68th National Convention will be from the 23rd to the 25th of August in Wales, in Newport, and you're invited to attend. And all branches and individuals are invited to showcase or advertise at the upcoming national convention. So you can have a slot where you can showcase your products or your services, and the details are on there. You can get prices from Sister Doreen, who is at the back, or Sister Shelly Ann, who is in the congregation. Can parents and guardians please accompany their young ch child or children when they wish to use the toilet facilities? This is part of our safeguarding. And there's a save the date, Saturday the 4th of May for National Sports Day. I would suggest you don't just save the date, but you try and get fit. Uh, that, that would be most important. You know what our minds can be like? We are in our 40s and 50s, but we still think we are 16. And yeah, and when you get there, hamstrings and all sorts. So please get fit for Saturday, the 4th of May. There's going to be football, netball, basketball. You don't need to get too fit for dominoes, but I know you need to slam them. So, and uh, there's going to be fun and food as well. There's a happy birthday to Reese. I was asking him if I can have a hairstyle like him, but he just laughed. Reese. Can you come? Happy birthday to you, Reese. <laughs> and I know Norton and Shanika are not out today, but I know that Brother Jonathan, ah, can we just pass it so you won't be able to get out from there? Would you mind passing this on to them for us, please? Thank you very much. And I have some additional announcements. So first of all, we have a thank you card. It's a beautiful thank you card. And it says, Dear Pastor Cox and Brethren, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all for being there for me with your kind words of encouragement, support, and prayers during my time of bereavement. Thank you for having patience with me when it was hard for me not knowing what to say. Only God knows our destiny, and God alone knows how to take us through. When further along, we will know all about it, and we will understand why. As the songwriter says, in Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, Firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. And that says, Amen from Sister Rosie McKenzie. God bless you, Sister Rosie. Praise God. Amen. 
I want to issue a number of thank yous. And first thank you is to uh, Donna, my wife, Amara, Marion, Sade, and Ruth. They formed a worship team for a funeral on Tuesday for Beverly Henry's mother. Uh, Beverly isn't here today. I know Everton is. I saw Everton earlier. But we just want to thank you. We also want to thank Stephen Powell, Wayne Powell, and Jonathan on the drums for forming the band for the funeral. So thank you to all of you and for making the time to be there. I want to thank the 30 plus members of New, to New Testament Church of God who supported, yeah, who supported the walk of witness. I think we had that. You should give yourselves a bigger hand. I, I think we probably had the biggest contingent of any of the churches who attended. I was so pleased personally for the support that was given. I want to thank Des. Where's Des? Can you stand, please? We want to thank Des, who brought the word outside the town hall. I would like to thank uh, Antonio. Can you stand, please? Antonio Cameron. Jonathan, can you stand, please? And Jonathan, can you stand, please? These men helped to carry the cross through the town. So thank you to you all. It, it was a real blessing. And what was equally a blessing was that some of you came up to me and said, Pastor, I've got some ideas for next year. So I thought, yep, that's good. I, I would like to thank those who took part in the outdoor service yesterday. As you can see, it's been a really busy week. Uh, I want to thank Jonathan on the drums yesterday. I want to thank Sharon. Would you stand, please? Sharon Thorborn, Shelly Ann Roberts Henry, Gillian Pinnock. You can stand, please. Amara Nelson, already standing. Sade and Donna, can you stand, please? They formed the worship team that sang outdoors uh, in St. George's Square in the town. We sang there from, it was one till three, and we were invited to join Word of Faith Ministries and it was a wonderful time. I want to thank Yannick Daly, Yannick, and Marion Kushni. I'm not sure where Marion is, but I want to thank you. Oh, there's Marion. I want to thank you because you danced in the, in the town square and under Mara. So it was Amara, it was Yannick, and it was Marion who danced. I want to thank Taj Wayne, Brother Bond, Taj Wayne for sharing his testimony and Yannick, who also brought a five-minute word. Thank you to all of you who took part yesterday. And to all of you who came and supported, really appreciate it. The final three things. So, Anaya, where's Anaya? Where is Anaya? Anaya, Anaya was, now this is amazing. All these times, and now Anaya's playing shy. Come on, Anaya, stand up. Anaya was uh, appointed as an RE champion for her school, and we want to celebrate with Anaya. I, I can't believe Anaya is doing the I am shy routine. Lord. And finally, we've got two short videos to, sh to show you. Um, one is of our bronze medal winning hurdler, Des Wilkinson. Des, come up, man. Uh, Gary's not here, but we're still going to show his video. He also won a bronze medal at the European Masters Champion. So, championships, sorry. So, there's the European bronze medalist, 60 meter hurdle. Hey. Come and stand next to me. Come and stand next to me. It's like you're walking on the podium again. Okay. Uh, have we got the videos ready? Wonderful. So, this is Desi's one. The 60 meter final and away we can see already. Oh, Des Wilkinson with a great start. Great Britain Northern Ireland, but Des Wilkinson coming through and one bucks also making a bit for the men. Oh, and it could be Neil Tunstall. I think Neil Tunstall, Great Britain and Northern Ireland may well have taken a gold medal. Could very well be one bucks in second place. And the bronze medal possibly going to Des Wilkinson of Great Britain and Northern Ireland with a confirmation, yes, in a time of a 9.3. The gold indoor championship. So God bless the medalist you. goes to Neil Tunstall from Great Britain, Northern Ireland, with one backs in second place, 9.45, and yet... Can, can we see Gary's? And we celebrate with Gary. 
So we, we have some athletes in this church. Final of the M50 and away goes Joe up here with Gary Smith in second place. But coming through, a very strong run by Jean. Coming through it. Oh, what a finish. What a spectacular run. And I believe Joe Appiah taking the goal. But we'll wait for confirmation. Probably a photo finish between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Gary Smith. And also for Jean Allen of Germany. Every time Gary runs, he runs against the world record holder. Um, but we are so grateful to God for blessing them both with bronze medals at the European Indoor Championships. God bless you. God bless you. Joe Appiah, actual record. I think I've thanked everyone that I needed to thank for this week. I just want to acknowledge that we have visitors, but I'll do that in a while. Uh, in this church, we are blessed to have the Luton Gems, but now it seems like they're being joined by the Luton Mums. <laughs> and I, I spoke to a couple of you before service started. I said, if you're needed, you know, to pick them up off the ground. Uh, <laughs> But we are grateful for the ministry. Where would you like me to put this? Is, do you need it out of the way? Okay. So right now we are about to be blessed by a ministry of the Luton Gems and the Luton Mums. I don't know what the official name is, but that's what we're going to call them. So the, the official name, <laughs> the official name is Vessels of Praise. V-O-P. Come on.
God, we give God thanks. Let's give him another hand. Praise the Lord. I know that a lot of you won't know this, but I want to give Marnie a really big hand. Uh, let's give her a hand first, and then I'll tell you why afterwards. So if you look around, you can see a young lady standing behind the camera. I went online and she was capturing everything. She was having to run up and down, move people out of the way who were getting in the shot, and she worked hard. And I just want to acknowledge what you did, Marnie, to get everything in, in shot. So please give her a hand. Yeah. 
And so as a church, we are now blessed with vessels of praise. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Praise God. I know some of them are going to sleep well tomorrow. I won't say who's going to sleep really well tomorrow. But it's such a blessing. Uh, it's a blessing to our church. It's a blessing to our town. And we give God praise and glory and honor. I believe Unique was the main choreographer. And we thank God for her. I just want to greet those of you who are visiting us for the first time. I know some of you are visiting for the first time. And uh, I would say to you that one of the people who visited us last week for the first time has come back and brought his mum. So, yeah. <laughs> and she's now looking at me like, oh. So, mum, just stand for us, mum, and wave. And this is Jay Joshua's, JJ's mum. And your name, please? Monica, great having you. God bless you. Is there anyone else here for the first time? It's your first time with us. Yes, can you stand, please? All those who are with you, let's stand. Wonderful, wonderful. So remain standing. Don't sit yet. Don't sit yet. <laughs> so we'll start with the gentleman. If you just tell us your name, 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 and then we come forward, name, name. So gentlemen, please. Pardon? Did you just say Cox? Okay. Well, we need to talk because I'm Vincent Cox. Yeah, oh, pray. wow, there's another Cox in the house. So it's Basil Cox, and next to you, Basil, is? What? Dikari. Wonderful, good to have you. And next to you is? Wonderful to have you. And then young man? Mackay and Natalie. Welcome to all of you. You will receive a card from our ushers. Please complete it and return it to them. Thank you. Oh, where am I looking? Oh, yes. Joy, well, you look so. So good having you, Joy. God bless you. Your mum, ah, so this is Latoya's mum, Sarai's grandma. Good to have you. Praise the Lord. Oh, this is wonderful. Praise the Lord. And we have the bonus of another cox in the house. We are... NTCG Luton. We are word-based, Holy Spirit-led, where people matter and grow together. We are a group of believers that believe that the Bible is the Word of God. Why do we believe that the Bible is the Word of God? Because it's a reliable collection of historical documents written by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses, which report supernatural events in fulfillment of specific prophecies, claiming to be words of divine origin rather than human origin. And this statement is derived from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 to 21. We know that the Word of God has the answers, and so we want to be like Timothy, who Paul told to study to show yourself approved a workman that needs not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and if we can rightly divide the word we can wrongly so we're going to be diligent in rightly dividing the word of truth it's Easter Sunday yeah it's a day that we acknowledge, recognize, and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I said on Friday that I was on a podcast on Thursday and I said, if we don't believe in the resurrection, we are not Christians. It's as strong as that. And I have to say it like that because we are now in a day when people are picking and choosing what they will believe from the Word of God. We feel like the Word of God is a buffet. Ever been to a buffet? 
and you walk along. Have you ever been to an all-you-can-eat buffet? Mm -hmm. How many of you had to loosen your... Yeah, okay. The Word of God is not a buffet. You don't pick and choose what you want to accept. We have to accept it all. And one of the key components is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's important that we understand it's not an allegory. It's not a myth. It's not something we can take or leave. It is historical. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is, is historical. So I would like us to turn to the New Testament book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I will read as you follow. I'm going to start at verse 1. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 says, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. Let's just say amen. Amen to the words of God. In this passage of scripture, Paul is writing to the church in Corinth and he's presenting three arguments. He's saying the resurrection is true because it was prophesied. So it's, you, may, you notice he kept on saying, as in the scriptures. So he was referring the people to the scriptures and he said, it was prophesied. The scriptures give us authority to understand that the resurrection is true. He said, the resurrection is true because there was evidence. There were eyewitnesses. And he said, at least 300 of the eyewitnesses are still alive. So if you look around in the church right now, if we maybe add about 120, 150 maybe, we would have about 300 people. He was saying there's at least 300 people who witnessed the risen Lord and Savior who are still alive. So over 500 witnessed him, but there are 300 of them who are still alive. And they witnessed him over a period of a month. So it wasn't as quick flash and then you could claim that maybe they had an illusion or whatever. It was over the period of a month and there are 300 people who are still alive who can testify to that. And finally, his third argument was from logic. And he talked about his own life in relation to that. And so he's laying a foundation. It's a crucial document, doctrine. It's a crucial doctrine, the resurrection. We must not be shaken from it. We must not be start to believe in myths and whatever. It's crucial to our faith. Did you know that 
the resurrection is the most well-attested historical fact. There are more written documents about the resurrection of Jesus Christ than there is anything else in ancient history. It's the recorded fact. And here's the great thing. We now have the internet, so you can go and search for yourselves. Because I know some of you are puzzled. Some of you are looking at me like, what? I didn't know that. Yeah, well, that's, that's good. You can go and check. In our day as young people, where did we have to go? The library. How many people used to have to go to the Encyclopedia Britannica? Yeah? You remember those salesmen who used to come around and try and sell you the whole volume? Well, there's 24, and that would only be 350 pounds. <laughs> Nowadays, even when I'm speaking, you can get your phones out. Don't, but, you, you know, it's, that's how accessible information is. It is the most attested historical fact. And it was written in a time when it could be disproved. And I've given these examples before, but let me do it again. Here we are on Easter Sunday. If I said to you, let me just see, I'll check. Right, so I can see Taj Wayne. Look at Taj Wayne, everybody. That's right, he's the handsome one in the corner. Dave is saying that they won't be able to distinguish between us. We're both handsome. Taj, just wave so that they can know who I'm talking about. So we've got Taj Wayne in the corner. If I wrote a blog now and put it on the internet, and I said that between January 2024 and March 2024, Taj Wayne was Prime Minister of Great Britain. Would anybody in here be able to disprove it? Only two of you. Is there anybody else who knows that Taj Wayne was not the Prime Minister? Uh, okay, I'm, oh, thank you, Jada. Right, so everybody in here, you are convinced and you know for a fact that Taj Wayne was not Prime Minister of Great Britain between January and March 2024, correct? So if I wrote a blog, what could you do? Pardon? What did you say? Lie. <laughs> you could say it's not true. That never happened. Couldn't you? You're, you're all in here. This is hard work. You're all in here. You can tell that Taj Wayne wasn't Prime Minister, true? Okay, I'm just checking. So the scriptures were written in the time when there were people who were still alive who could say that wasn't true. On top of that, the Romans, they could have written and said, that's not true. But when you look at the Roman documents, the Roman documents say this Yeshua, who his disciples are convinced has been risen. They didn't say he never rose again, he's still in the tomb. They said he's not in the tomb. His disciples and those who followed him are convinced that he's written. So this is people outside of the Bible, outside of Christianity, who are writing about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There is historical fact. I'm laboring this because we are in an in a age of lies. There are lies and lies and lies. And some people come on and they're so convincing in the way they speak. I am a professor of whatever and I'm telling you, no. The, the facts state Jesus Christ rose again. The scriptures attested to Jesus Christ rising again. And it's really important because there are some people in our lives who think that as Christians, we are just operating on blind faith. Do you know anybody like that? Who thinks that because you have faith in Jesus Christ, it's just blind faith? I want us to understand our faith is secure in fact. Our faith is secure in history and our faith is secure in logic. And so scripture attests I'm going to jump to a scripture. I, I want you all to turn to Psalm 22. Most people know Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. But Psalm 22. 
is called the Psalm of the Cross. It's a Psalm of David. David was writing 1,000 years before Jesus Christ was even born. He was writing before the Romans even came into being. And he wrote this psalm and it says, the first verse says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We're just going to stop there. Do you recognize those words? It's one of those seven statements of Jesus on the cross. And in Jesus' day, they didn't have chapters and verses. In Jesus' day, when the rabbi wanted you to find a particular scripture, he would quote the first line. And so if a rabbi wanted you to read what we now call Psalm 22, he would say, Eli, Eli, Lamai. Sabbatani, or Sabbatani, depending on whose pronunciation. And you would know that you need to turn to Psalm, what we now call Psalm 22. In a similar way, if I said, Amazing Grace, how sweet, the, do you see how your minds went to the, the line? So you have to understand that when Jesus Christ was on the cross, there was a reason he cried out. There was two reasons. Of course, he was being forsaken, but he wanted the people's minds to go immediately to the psalm. So just like I said, amazing grace, and you said that. Right, so in the same way, Jesus Christ on the cross, all those people who are witnessing him on the cross, he cries out, Eli, Eli. Lama Sabatini. And they would have gone to this psalm in their mind, and it says, Why art thou so far from me, from helping me, and from the words of my roaring? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. We need to praise God about that. God inhabits our praises. We want the presence of God. We praise him. He, he inhabits our praises. Verse 4, our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted him. If we just stop there, isn't that what happened? Didn't people stand by the cross and say, he helped others. How comes he can't help himself? Do you see a psalm written a thousand years before? Verse 9, but thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. For there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me around. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are, of, are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a pot's herd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me. Dogs was often a term used to refer to Gentiles. Dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. 
They pierced my hands and my feet. Not everyone who was on the cross was pierced. Some were tied on. Verse 17, I may tell, I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord. O my strength, haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. I just need to stop for a moment and say, what Jesus is describing, the emotions he's going through, the dryness of palate, you know, these are all the symptoms that you would receive if you were on a cross. Do you remember he said, I thirst? And they brought him the vinegar. They say that when you're on a cross, what you really die from is suffocation. Because you can't hold your body up. You, your lungs are filling up and you die of suffocation. Jesus Christ described all that was written in Psalm 22. But the most amazing thing about Psalm 22, written a thousand years before Jesus, was that crucifixion was unknown in the world when Psalm 22 was written. Crucifixion came into this world with the Romans a thousand years later. So who inspired David to write this psalm? It could only be God. He, he was not writing about something that he knew about. He was not writing about something he'd seen. He was not writing about something that was in his world. It was not in the world at all. It was a thousand years before crucifixion was in this world. God inspired David to write a psalm that described death on the cross. And when Jesus was on the cross, he cried out the verse of the psalm to take the people back to the fact that this was prophesied. This was not an accident. Jesus Christ laid down his life so that we may have life. We need to recognize just how miraculous the death on the cross was, but the resurrection, it gives us hope. Anybody in here lacking hope? If you're here today and you feel that you're without hope, you can turn to Jesus Christ because he lived, he died, they took him off the cross, they buried him. But three days later, he rose again, showing that he had conquered death. He'd conquered the grave. And now we have hope. We have hope because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Even in our lowest moments, we can say, Father, in you I have hope. Here's our challenge. Because I'm sure every single one of us has had a low moment. Ever had a low moment? Ever felt like you can't go on? I can't, what do we say? I can't take it no more. You ever heard somebody say, I can't take it. Not even take it, take it. In those moments, Jesus Christ said, trust me. And that's the hard part, isn't it? Because I've had people say to me, Pastor, it's easy for you to say. It's not easy for me to say. But I've had to do it. I've had to do it. Low moments in life. Moments when I don't know what to do. I don't know if you've ever been there. You just don't know what to do. The situation just seems so bad. You just don't know what to do. 
Some of you may be like me. I used to internalize. Anybody internalize? You don't have to put your hand up because I know you're internalizing right now. You, you just keep everything to yourself. You don't share anything with anybody. And you become burdened and pressured. Your blood pressure goes up. You go to the doctor. Your pressure's high. Are you worrying about anything? No, not really. You can't explain why the pressure's high because we've internalized. Some of us are ashamed. If I tell somebody what I'm going through, we're embarrassed. Some of us, we're doing what we don't want to do. Well, Paul, Paul went through the same thing. He said, the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. And so that type of person gets angry with themselves and can't forgive themselves. And do you know what? We end up staying exactly where we are. But what we need to do is put our trust in Jesus. We need to put our hope in Jesus. He made the way for us. I've shared this story before, but I, I just want to share it. I'm not sure why I want to share it right now, but I'm going to share it right now. An example of how grief can come upon you unawares. And before we had Jonathan, we were, we had, I say we were pregnant. I wasn't pregnant, of course. But we were expecting a child and that child died before it was born. And I remember when I used to hear news stories of children who were maybe six months or three months dying, in my head I used to say, at least the parents didn't get chance to get close. That was my thought. But here I was, the, the doctors said to me, can you just go and get your wife some clothes? And I went out into the car park, I was walking towards the car, and suddenly, and it was an and suddenly moment, and suddenly, out of absolutely nowhere, a wave of grief just came, and I bawled out. And I was conscious of what was happening, but I didn't know what was happening. I bawled. I just bawled in the car park, trying to see where the car was through tears. And I couldn't understand. But of course, what had happened was, as soon as I knew that Donna was pregnant, I started talking with the baby and connecting with the baby and talking about when the baby comes. And, and I didn't realize that bond that had grown. And look, that bond that I had was nothing like the bond that Donna had because Donna was carrying the baby. Donna could feel the baby. And I know there's some of you in here who know that. You've experienced that. And yet, the grief was real. It actually overwhelmed me. And I was lost in the grief for a moment. It was quite a long moment. I was standing outside by the car, crying. And then I heard a voice inside say, okay, you have to go back inside, so praise me. And it was important that I didn't go back inside to Donna bawling. And I really believe the Holy Spirit was talking to me and saying, okay, get yourself together now. Trust me. Praise me. In the midst of death, the Lord was saying, trust me. Get yourself together. Trust me. A year later, God blessed us. A year later, God blessed us. And we had our first son, Jonathan. And here's the thing. I, some years later, I was preaching in Harrow and just like today, I didn't mean to share any of that, but I shared it in Harrow. And afterwards, woman after woman came up to me and said, I had one miscarriage. I had three miscarriages. I've had six miscarriages. And I was stunned because those women had worshipped with us and we didn't know. 
In fact, nobody in church knew. These women were carrying that weight on their own, wanting to have children. Children dying in the womb and facing. So you know sometimes we were looking at people and saying, I don't, I don't always like that. <laughs> we didn't know what they were going through. We didn't know the pain they were carrying. And there was some release in that sermon. There was a release for those women. And we were able to share something with them. And, you know, one by one, they started giving birth. And we were like, wow. And I came to Luton, as you know, nearly nine years ago. And about five years ago, I was parking in the mall. And I heard, Rev. And it was one of those ladies, the, the one who'd had six miscarriages. And she told me that she had two children now. And I said, God, you are amazing. Resurrection power. We are called to praise God. And I'm going to say it this way. We're called to praise God no matter how we feel. I heard a preacher say there are two times that you should praise God. When you feel like it and when you don't. Praise him. Praise him. Some of you in here right now don't feel like praising God. Praise him. Some of you feel like praising God. Praise him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Praise him. Resurrection power. Some of us think that the time has passed for us, whatever that time relates to. But you've been hearing a small voice inside saying, it hasn't passed. Trust God. Trust Him. I remember we had a visitor once. He, he'd come for the first time, and I remember the Lord gave me a word for him. The Lord said, there is something in your life that has, you thought, it had passed. The time had passed. It's been a long time. But God said, I will revive it. And when that person came to me afterwards, they were like, but you don't know me. And I said, to be honest, I had almost forgotten. Because sometimes the Lord gives me a word for somebody and almost immediately I forget. Because it's not me. It wasn't my word. And the thing had been over 20 years. And the Lord was saying, I haven't finished with it. But do you know what we can do? We can actually rebel. We, we can actually just do our own thing. I, I'm praying that we will be a church who does what God says and not what we, we want. Because our flesh, I've said this before, our flesh wants what our flesh wants. And we can be deceived by our flesh. And remember, we are in a time of deception. We are in a time of lies. And we need the truth of God. So I'm going to invite you to stand. There are some things you thought were dead. But the Lord said, they shall live. Thank you, Jesus. some here today who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You don't know what his death on the cross means to you. But the Bible tells us and our own lives tell us that we were born in sin. We were shaped in our generational sin. And the Bible also tells us that sinful man cannot stand before a holy God. And we also know that we don't have the means to pay the price. 
And it doesn't matter how wealthy we get, we won't be able to pay the price to stand in the presence of a holy, righteous, just God. Some of us have lived anyhow, done all sorts of things. And we believe now that I'm lost. Have you ever spoken to somebody who says, I can't come to church because if I come, I might burst into flames? Yeah, I, I've spoken to those people because they know that they've lived bad lives. And some of us are living bad lives and we don't even know we're living bad lives. But the fact is that unless our life is in Christ, it is a bad life. The problem is we keep measuring ourselves against other people. You're here today and you know you need to submit your life to Christ. You need to ask God to forgive you for the sins that you've committed and receive the life that Jesus Christ has given. We're here to pray with you. And it doesn't matter if people think you're a Christian. If you know where you're at, just come. Let us submit ourselves before a holy God. As we worshipped in the town centre, I looked around as all types of people came. Some videoed, some sang with us, trying to pick up the words. There were people who were quite clearly Muslim in faith. There were those who were Hindu in faith. There were those of no faith. There were those from the Middle East. There were those from the Far East. There were those from Europe. There were those from Africa. And the ministry of the word was going out. The songs were going out. Madison came and she said, I can hear you from the interchange. So the, the sound was going out over our town. And we're believing and trusting God for souls. A lady came to me and she, she was from Hitchin. And she said, can I have the details of your church? She goes to church in Hitchin, but she wants to come and visit. There's a sound that God has given us. And that sound has to go out because there are souls that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said, receive the gospel I preach to you, the gospel by which you are saved. So you may be a visitor here and you feel that I can't come. You can come. We will pray for you. And there is someone that I would like us to pray for. I don't know your name, but you're standing, young man there. No, behind you. Can we pray with you? Yeah. If you want to come with him, you can. Taj, can you come, please? You can just stand here. We'd just love to pray with you. No, there, right where you are. I'm going to ask Taj Wayne to pray with you. You're here and you need prayer. Can we sing that, please? Can you come down here, please? Yeah, come. and the light Jesus is your
Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28 says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee, that's you, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed, thank you, Holy Spirit, shalt thou be in the city, and blessed, hallelujah, shalt thou be in the field. It's a declaration, you are blessed, you are blessed. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. That's good health, brethren. That is good health for your body, and blessed, shall be the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed, hallelujah, shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed, hallelujah, shalt thou be when thou, ah, yes, Lord, when thou comest in and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. You are blessed to be a blessing. The Lord is blessing you, hallelujah. The Lord is blessing you, the Lord is blessing you, the Lord is blessing you, hallelujah. And you are blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. 
brethren. Hallelujah, God loves your worship. So before we go, there is a word that was given. See that you are not deceived by the great disaster. Keep your eyes on me, lest you be shaken beyond reconciliation. The gates of the Lord are open. Only he who is worthy will be let in. All ye who trust in me, rejoice. I am thy God. Amen. That was the word that was given to us. The gates of the Lord are open. Only he who is worthy will be let in. All ye who trust in me, rejoice. I am thy God. Praise God. I pray that as we go and as we sit with family and friends, that you will be blessed. Each service that we end, we end with that song, The Blessing. But I just want to read the context for that song. It's taken from Numbers 6, starting at verse 22. And it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, to bless the people of Israel with this special blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Verse 27 says, Whenever Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in my name, I myself will bless them. God promises that when that blessing is said over us, he will personally bless us. And so, brothers, sisters, friends, may God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.